And Satan wants you incapacitated. He wants you broke. He wants you to be in perpetual poverty so that the only power you have at your disposal is prayer. These are the tributaries through which divine prosperity flows. First tributary, Psalms 23, verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The first window of the manifestation of divine prosperity, of supply that is material and financial, is captured under the heading divine direction. And um, that is what we call wisdom because the profit that is in wisdom is in the fact that it has capacity to give direction. You must have seen the scripture that says wisdom is profitable to direct. The profit we derive from wisdom is in its nature to give what? Most of us in this place are graduates, different fields. So we are a literate company, a literate fellowship. And we have experts online. We have all kinds of experts here, professionals. But what's a, what makes a man prosper is not that you are an expert. Meanwhile, it is good to be an expert. It's good to be the best in your field. It's good to know your onion. Being a novice is not something to be proud of. In any field you find yourself, you must labor to shine bright. Hallelujah. However, if God wants to begin to make you profit, one of the things he makes available in your life is direction. Direction divine direction. And that's why you will understand that the currency of prosperity is tied to intimacy that you have built with God over the years. Over the years. There is so much that we can benefit from the Holy Spirit if you have taken your time to build intimacy with Him. So much that you can benefit. Pastor Siri, come up here. So this is our pastor from Warizim, a powerful man of God. The last time I heard you teach, you were talking about a time where you began to labor to understand God's mind in terms of divine direction and touching where he intends you to bless you from. Can you tell us a little about that? And you said you were on a ship and you refused to partake. Now, we, we walk on ships, okay? When you come... There, you will see all kinds of food, turkey, fried rice, rice. You even see soft drinks that we have never seen in Nigeria. It's flowing in that place. For you to come there and fast, it means you know Jesus. And you heard what he said that, is he a custom man or a military a man? Navy officer. A Navy officer was posted to the dockyard. And so he showed up and saw food. By the time he was disembarking, his button for his uniform could no longer fit. That is where we used to work. So, he will give you a quick story. And then we'll talk about divine direction. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, thank you, Papa. Um, actually, my background is industrial mathematics. So, I graduated um, BSc in industrial mathematics. But I had not had a job for about, after graduation, about three years. I was hopping from job to job, worked in a fast food worked as a marketing officer where I really trekked and my shoes were messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually, somehow... You, you will see him fine like this. You don't know that he has been trekking until the alignment of the shoe. You know, the church of this day, we like showcasing finished products. We don't like telling people the process. Yes, Pastor. So eventually, God opened a door. I got a job as a safety assistant. Without doing anything safety, I had no degree in safety, no certification. So immediately I arrived offshore in Escravos. I, I understood that God giving me that job without a certification was a sign to call me to prayer. So immediately I landed. I was assigned to the training department as training assistant, giving people inductions, teaching people safety courses. So immediately I landed, I entered into a fast. So while people were going to eat, I would lie down in the office all night, evenings, begging God to show me what to do. Meanwhile, if you go to the depot, the first thing, this depot, 
When you arrive at the gate, you see a big signboard there. Safety begins here. All business is built around safety consciousness. You need 15 billion naira to build a depot facility that has five tanks and has the capacity to hold 30,000 metric tons. And with all of that, if someone comes into the installation with a cigarette, he can raise it down. So you will need a consciousness of safety beyond the one you have now to survive in that workspace. So safety is a big deal in the oil industry. And he was employed as a safety expert without certification and experience. So how did you survive? So um, it was during that prayer, one of the nights, the Lord came to me and said I should do the topmost certification at that time. It's called NEBOSH. National Examination Board for Occupational Safety and Health is a UK certification. At the time I was employed, my salary was about 77,000. That certification, including feeding and all of that, was 450,000. So I didn't know how I was going to do it. I called my brother-in-law, said, okay, I needed money. So he said he would advance me some money. I'll pay for my salary as it comes. So I did that certification long and short. I passed it on the first sitting. After that, I needed not to look for jobs. Jobs came to me when I resigned. Did I you know from the Lord that safety is your direction? Yes. yes. So you knew it from the Lord? Yes, from the okay. Lord. The Lord now, told there, me to go that route. All right. So the reason why I called him is because of Psalms 23 verse 1. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One of the currencies of prosperity is divine direction. So this is just an example. God bless you. So the question I need to ask now, do you know Jesus? Do you know him intimately? If you can still hear his voice, Jesus can give you direction. You are confused about what you need to do. Sometimes you don't need to do anything. What you need to do is to follow someone. God said, just follow this man. He will prosper. Follow him. Don't do anything. Just follow him. For some, their destinies are tied to following other people. For how will you know who to follow if you don't hear God? So we'll need to build ourselves to that point where we can hear God. Because it's one of the currencies of divine prosperity. Malachi 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here which seeth the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. The Bible says that the direct effect, direct result of bringing your tithe, bringing your due to God, there are some things that are God's due, God's salary. It is God's entitlement. And we took a lot of time to speak about those things. I don't want to double into that. When you bring God's due to him, in response to the fact that you have decided to function by the understanding of the principle of honor, God says in return that he will open the windows of heaven. And I told you that there are three closely related metaphors. One is the door. Two is the gate. Three is the window. The doors mean opportunity. The gates mean authority. And the windows mean blessing. So God says that when you bring his due, he's going to open the windows of heaven. I would like you to see the form in which blessing exists. He says, I'll pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. So the question is this. Is there an amount of money that you are giving that you don't have a bank, bank account to receive it? Those online. Is there an amount of money that you can be given that you don't have a bank account to receive it? Okay, the answer is no. It means that the form in which these blessings exist are not in financial mode. So what we are talking about here is that blessings that are in form of ideas and the room that is spoken about in that scripture is that your mind cannot fully contain it. So one of the ways that God brings us into 
prosperity is that it gives us inspired ideas. Inspired ideas. And when you translate those ideas to action, it holds a promise of prosperity. First is divine direction. Second is what? Inspired idea. And the room in this scripture is your mind. Your mind will not be able to handle these ideas when God begins to open it up. Yes, I know you are a doctor. I know you are um, an academic guru. I know you are a banking expert. Well, that's great, but you need ideas. When the ideas come, that is a currency in which your prosperity will be found. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. And Satan wants you incapacitated. He wants you broke. He wants you to be in perpetual poverty. So that the only power you have at your disposal is prayer. But it is God's will to move us beyond that point. He wants to bring us to the point of actualization. Where you are in the center of administering kingdom things. And your life is like a pivot that drives the agenda of God upon the face of the earth. Bring ye all the tithes, he says, into my storehouse. There might be meat in my house. Bring my dew. And prove me now here with the God if I will not open the windows of heaven pour you out a blessing that there will be not room enough to receive it. For there is a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty, give it them understand. So it is not of him that will it. It is not of him that run it. It is of God that showeth mercy. So that we will realize that it's not by power, it is not by mind, but it is by the Spirit of God. Anyone that is in true custody of divine prosperity runs back to God to give him glory, to give him praise. Because he knows that it was by the moving of the hand of God that he occasioned what is happening in his life. The inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. And that's what I want you to pray for tonight. Inspire my mind. Kelvin, do you know there is a, a song that you can be inspired to sing and the whole world will sing? How can you quantify the currency of that inspiration? For the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding.